Hello, dear candidates, and uh, welcome to this uh, presentation of the GC Math Panel Physics 2021 Paper 1. And we employ to watch this video to the end. And in this particular video, we show you the highlights of how this paper should be answered and some very important remarks that you should take note as you prepare to write GC. Please don't forget to subscribe, and you can also watch Paper 2 and other papers. Note, without subscription, you will not be able to open the other sheets. Welcome and stay tuned. So the first thing about this paper is that here we have been told that we should consider the acceleration of free fall to be 10 meters per square second. And the speed of light in vacuum or approximately in air too is three times 10 to the power eight meters per second. And the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So that is what we are going to be used in answering this paper. Take notes that whenever you take your scripts, make sure that you always follow the instructions as you begin. Please don't forget to watch to the end and make sure you subscribe. So the first question reads, which of the following represents momentum. We know that momentum of a particle is a product of mass and velocity. Mass is in kilograms and velocity is in meters per second. So in this case, we have D. We have D as the key. Question two, the base unit of length is the meter. This is from one and from two work. The basic unit of length is the meter. So we have B. Question three, um, which of the following pairs are all scalars? The scalar quantity has magnitude, but no direction. So the only pair here that are both scalars, we have work and time. We have work and time. They are both scalar quantities. Work and time are both scalar uh, quantities. So a key here is um, A. Um, question number four, which of the graph in figure one best describe the relationship between the acceleration of a moving car and its mass at constant force? So guys, when the force is constant, we have mass times acceleration is equal to a constant. So F here is a constant. And from here, we can see that mass and acceleration are inversely proportional. And with inverse proportional, you can think about something like Boyce laws. The curve is just like Boyce law, right? So this is the curve that represents mass and acceleration being inversely proportional. So our key here is A. Our key here is A. We are trying not to focus on the wrong uh, alternatives because students get confused at times as we have found out. So just explain uh, the most important concepts for the key itself. Don't forget to subscribe and to watch this video to the end because without subscribing, you will not be able to watch paper two and other videos. That is how the settings has been made. Question five, which of the units is equivalent to the joule per coulomb? Joule per coulomb. Normally we know that work is equal to quantity times uh, voltage, where that is charge times voltage, charge times voltage, where the charge is in coulombs and the voltage is in volts. So work done is equal to that. And this work done is in joules. If we divide work by charge, we are going to have volts. And volts is the same as the joule per coulomb because work is in joules and charge is in coulomb. So the volt is the same as the joule per coulomb. So our key here is B. Question six, for a body to stay in equilibrium, Normally, for a body to stay in equilibrium, there are two things that uh, are required. There are two key things required. The first thing is that the net force or the algebraic sum of forces must be equal to zero, and the sum of moments must be equal to zero about any point or axis. So there are two conditions. In this case, our key is B. The net force must be zero, and the sum of moments must be zero. That's the condition for equilibrium. Uh, question seven, in a velocity time graph, the area between the graph and the time axis gives, so example, I've taken this example of velocity time graph here. This is velocity on the y-axis. 
and time on the x-axis. The area under this graph normally can be a straight line like this, a horizontal line, but I've just taken this one. The area under this graph gives us the distance. And you can get this by half base times height. That will give you velocity times time. And velocity times time is equal to displacement or uh, distance if you're talking in terms of speed. So the area under this graph is uh, distance, OK? Mission eight. Seat belts are used to reduce injury on users in the case of accidents by. So the seat belt functions on the principle that when you're putting on the seat belt, the car, you take a very long time. In fact, you take a longer time to come to rest. So the seat belt increases the time to come to rest. And at the same time, it brings down the force. Since you take a longer time to come to rest, the impact or the force that you feel will be lower than when you take a very short time to come to rest. Like just running and you run gently and hit yourself against the wall. And when you run fast, when you go faster, you feel the impact. But when, when you go slower, that is the time has increased, you have a lower force, right? So those are, that's the principle of seat belt. So they increase the stopping time and reduce the stopping force. That's what happens. Which of these energy resources is non renewable? So, biomass is renewable, tidal air or wind, all, the, all of that is renewable, solar energy is renewable, but petroleum is not renewable. Please, um, every Mondays at 11 a.m., you can always get a new video that you have uploaded. A key here is A. So, petroleum is a non renewable source. Now, which of the following pairs of forces are both non-contact forces? Contact forces are forces that act when the subjects are, uh, objects are in contact. So non-contact means the objects are not in contact. And for non-contact forces, we have magnetic, electric, and gravitational. So normally, obtrust acts when the objects are in contact. So the first, this one is not correct. Air resistance acts when they're in contact. The second one is not correct. Friction acts when they're in contact. So the third one is not correct. The last one, Z. Magnetic force or weight or gravitational force are the two non-contact forces. 11, a ball of mass 0 0.5 kg is traveling at 10 meters per second. What is the kinetic energy? We know the formula for kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared. So this gives us a 0 0.5 times 10 times 10, all that on two. So we have 25 joules. It's 25 joules. That's the kinetic energy of that ball, 25 joules. Question 12, what type of energy is stored in a compressed stream? What type of energy is stored in a compressed stream? Now, a stream stores elastic uh, energy, right? Now, when it is compressed, it has elastic potential energy, EPE. Elastic potential energy, EPE. Um, question 13, the density of a substance is, so be very careful with this definition, the mass of one kilogram of that substance. This one is tautology now. Hmm? The mass of one kilogram, this one does not even make sense. Because one kilogram is already the mass. How can I talk about the mass of the mass? The mass of one gram, this one is also totally does not make sense. The volume of a unit mass of the substance. Density is not the measure of volume, it's the measure of mass. So it's the mass of a unit volume. This one is correct, it's the mass of a unit volume. This unit volume here is uh, in, with respect to the SI unit, that is in kilograms. So the mass of a unit volume of the substance. You can equally uh, get our notes by going to gcemathpanel.blogspot.com or www.gcemathpanel.com and you select physics, ordinary level, A level, and you get physics notes. Yeah, we have life lessons that you see there. So you get those lessons and prepare yourself. We have lessons from form one to form three, or the first part that prepares you and form four and form five, and past questions and other stuff that add. Equally, we have these lessons on Mondays. You can get the course on Mondays. We are broadcasting live on YouTube on Mondays at 11 a.m. Cameroon time or GMT plus one. Question 14 in figure three, 
An irregularly shaped object is put into a measuring cylinder containing water. This is from one and from two work, right? So what's the volume of this object? Now with this measuring cylinder, when there was nothing inside, the uh, initial volume V1 was 100 cm cube. Normally these are experiments to measure the volume of irregularly shaped objects that do not dissolve in water. Irregularly shaped objects, as you know, like stone and all those things. This is what we did, these experiments. So now when we now put this object or the stone, whatever, into this uh, measuring cylinder, we have a new volume, which is V2. Here it is 145 cm cube. So the volume of this object would be this V2 minus V1, and that gives us 45 cm cube, right? 45 cm cube. Please don't forget to share this video with your friends and in all WhatsApp groups in which you find yourself. It's very important because this is being made for free. And since the GCE is not a competitive exam, it is good that you share with your friends so that they also uh, make it. Some of these questions are available in PDF too. And don't forget to watch paper two. But note that if you don't subscribe, there is no way for you to watch paper two because it will only be available for those who subscribe to this channel. We thank the GC Math Panel for giving us this opportunity to use their medium for this video. All right, uh, question 15, the hydraulic jack works on the principle that, so the hydraulic jack works on one principle, as you already know, that the pressure applied at one point in the liquid is equally transmitted to all points of that liquid. The pressure applied at one point is equally transmitted to all points of that liquid. That is the principle on which the hydraulic jack functions. Okay. Good. So, what is the pressure in Pascal's in a liquid of density 1000 kilograms per cubic meter at a depth of 10 meters? We know that there are two formulas for pressure, right? Or formulae, rather. Uh, we have a uh, Pressure is equal to force over area, that is force uh, over normal area. And uh, in liquids, we have pressure is equal to density times gravity times height. So with liquids, pressure is directly proportional to depth. The deeper you go into the sea, the higher the pressure on you. So what would be the pressure? Pressure is equal to density times gravity times height. And we know gravity is equal to 10, as we were giving at the beginning of this video on that patient paper. You see, we should use 10, that's why I've used 10 here. So we have 10 to the power five Pascals since pressure is measured in Pascals. Mm -hmm. um, question 17, which of the graphs in figure four shows how the pressure of a given depth varies the depth of the liquid? I just explained this previously. In liquids, pressure is directly proportional to the depth and you just saw the formula, right? So there is direct proportion, it's a straight line. All right, question 18. <clears throat> Guys, don't forget to subscribe, okay, to this channel, question 18. When evaporation takes place, the temperature of the remaining liquid drops because normally evaporation, when it's occurring, the liquid uh, molecules at the surface that gain kinetic energy vibrate at very high amplitudes and vibrate very fast. Those fast molecules are the ones that escape. When they escape, they leave the slower molecules. And as a result of that, the temperature of the liquid drops. So the, the, the temperature falls because the fastest molecules are escaping. They're carrying all of the energy and escaping. The absolute zero, that zero Kelvin is the same as a Celsius temperature of, normally absolute zero is minus 273 degrees Celsius. And we can use the formula, absolute zero means zero Kelvin. You can substitute this in the formula. Temperature in Kelvin is called temperature in degrees plus 273. So a temperature in Kelvin here is zero. This zero should be equal to temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. And when you solve a theta here, a theta is going to be equal to minus 273. So absolute zero is the same as minus 273 degree Celsius, okay? Question number 20, water is used in car radiators because it has, there is only one reason why we use water in car radiators. Um, although it's cheap, that's another reason, but that's not the main reason in physics. It is because it absorbs a lot of energy for its temperature to rise. So because it has a high heat capacity, high heat capacity, you take you absorb a lot of heat energy for its temperature to rise a bit. Uh, question number 21, 
um, this DGC Math panel and we are broadcasting through them. Every Monday at 11 a.m., you can get our new video on YouTube on this same channel that you're watching this one. You can equally get past questions from their blog, www.gcmathpanel.blogspot.com. And to watch our other papers, you'll be required to subscribe and click on notifications so that whenever we are broadcasting, then you'll be able to get to us. And you can equally follow our live classes on Mondays at that same time. If you have your comments, you will comment below this video. During the night, the temperature of the sea water is higher than that of the sandy seashore. Why is this? Yeah, so normally at night, the sea water um, has a higher temperature than that of the sandy seashore. This is because um, water conserves a lot of uh, energy and it takes much time for the temperature to fall by one degree or so one Kelvin. Unlike sun, which has a smaller specific capacity, and because of that, it needs just small amounts of time for its temperature to fall so much. And that is why the water on the seashore is having a higher temperature because of its higher, or to give it in one statement, water has a higher heat capacity than sun. That is the one short reason, okay? So that's it. Question 22, the specific latent heat of fusion of a substance is the amount of heat energy needed to convert. So fusion is about conversion from solid to liquid, right? And for specific latent heat, it should be a constant temperature. And this heat involves one kilogram of that substance. So it is the amount of heat energy required to convert one kilogram of the substance from solid to liquid at constant temperature, okay? at constant temperature, that is fusion. 23, heat from the sun reaches the earth by, from one work, radiation. So heat from the sun reaches the earth by um, radiation, okay? When measuring the specific heat capacity of liquid, the calorimeter and its content is locked so as to it's being lacked to minimize heat exchange with the environment. Hmm? Yes, it's being lacked to minimize the heat exchange or heat losses to the environment. 25, we have come to a half of the questions. A car moving with uniform acceleration, its velocity time graph is, so if acceleration is constant, it means the rate of change of velocity is constant, right? the rate of change of velocity is constant. So the curve here should be B. Hmm? Yeah, in A, the velocity is constant. So we cannot take this one. The rate of change in B is constant. So we take B, you can see that it's constant. If you draw a triangle and take change in Y over change in X, it will be constant. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe because that is what is going to help you to watch paper two. When you subscribe and click on the notifications, then you'll be able to watch paper two on Monday or anytime on YouTube. But you have to subscribe. Otherwise, you click on watch paper two and it will not open. You can equally watch uh, chemistry, economics, mathematics, and other subjects on the same uh, platform. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and ask them to subscribe as well. Well, if you love the GC Math panel and what we are doing online, why not share this to 10 different groups? Thank you so much. Those particles often stick on television screens because normally the screen is positively charged. The screen becomes positively charged as you're watching the television screen. So when those particles fly near it, the positive charges in the screen induce a charge on the dust particle pulling the negative charges closer to it and pushing the positive charges away. The screen then attracts the negative side, pulling the dust particles to itself. So a key here is the TV screen becomes charged and so attracts the oppositely charged dust particles. A. 27, electrical power is transmitted at high voltage in thick copper cables. Well, transmission at high voltage, as we already know, is to minimize heat losses or power losses. 
as low as possible to minimize power losses. That's the reason they transmit at high voltage to minimize power losses. 28, the effective voltage of electrical energy supplied to our homes by ENEO is, well, ENEO is the company in Cameroon that supplies electricity and that supply is done at 220 volts and a frequency of 50 Hertz. So ENEO supplies at 220 volts and 50 Hertz, what equation? <laughs> okay, uh, 29, when we pay electricity bills, what are we paying for? We are paying for energy because they talk about kilowatts are. Ah, that watts there can confuse many people. But we know that the watts times R, watts is an energy, uh, is a unit of power, but R is a unit of uh, time. So um, power times time gives us energy. So the kilowatt R is energy consumption. Okay, not electricity consumption. In physics, you say energy consumption. 30, a voltmeter is connected in the circuit as shown. The voltmeter is connected as such, as such because it has a very, now the voltmeter has very, very high resistance. So very small current, when the currents flow through it. So it's connected as such because it is difficult to current. This one, the, the, the resistance is very high. Sometimes it's infinitely high resistance or very high resistance. And so it will draw negligible current or very small currents will flow through this thing. So, because it has a very high resistance and so draws what type of current? Draws low current or negligible current. That's why it's connected like this. Why our metals will be connected in series so as to measure all the currents and they have very low resistance. <clears throat> Normally, the voltmeter is always connected in parallel, as you can see, okay? Uh, 31, the bar magnet in figure six is moved quickly towards the solenoid. The rule that can be used to determine the magnitude of the induced EMF generated by the solenoid is, normally that rule is um, Faraday's rule. And Faraday's rule is used to determine the induced EMF or induced voltage, anyone can use to call it, induced voltage, or induced EMF is Faraday's law. In drawing of magnetic field lines, the stronger field is there so the stronger field is when the lines, the field lines are closer. When they are closer, not more divergent. When the field lines are closer, that's when the field is stronger. Okay, stronger when the field lines are closer. That's the theory. An optical pin is placed between the principal focus and the optical center of a converging lens. The image formed is normally when you place an object between the principal focus and the optical center, you always have a virtual image, which is magnified and erect. It's not upside down. So I'm saying it's upside up. Uh -huh. The image is standing the same, uh, the same as the object, but it's bigger, it's magnified. Uh, let me draw it, this is the diagram and example. So if you place an object, this is the principal focus, and this is the optical center of the lens. If you place an image here, this is what happens. Uh, an object here, this is what happens. At the point A, so that the image should be on the same side of the lens as the object. Secondly, that image is magnified. Thirdly, the image is erect. And this image, these lines are the broken lines. Can say these lines are, not, are broken lines, right? Broken lines are used when the image is virtual. So the image is virtual, erect, magnified, and on the same side of the lens as the object. Well, those are just extensions. So the uh, image is virtual and bigger than the object. 34, which of the diagrams in figure seven below shows total internal reflection? The first thing you have to note about total internal reflection is that it can only occur if the incident light is traveling within the more optically dense medium towards the less dense medium. So it can never occur if the object is traveling from air to glass. Why? because air is less dense. It only occurs when something is traveling towards less dense, less dense. So this first one is wrong because it's traveling towards more dense. This second one is correct because here at this point, it was moving, almost moving outside to air, which is less dense, but now it bounces off and moves back inside the same medium, which is glass. So B is the correct one here because it only occurs when it's traveling towards the less dense. 
towards less dense. 35, soft iron is used as the core of electromagnets because there's just one reason, it is easy to magnetize and easy to demagnetize. That's why soft iron is used in the core of electromagnets. You don't want something that you put off the current and the thing is still magnetized when you want to actually pick something and drop it. 36, which of the following is best suited for making the core of transformers? So the best for making the core of transformers is soft iron. It's the best material to make the core of transformers because um, of its permeability, which is very high. And it also has a low hysteresis curve of small area due to its low coercivity. So soft iron is the best material, okay? Right, 37, a bar magnet with known poles is used to study the properties of a bar AB. If the south pole of the bar magnet attracts an A and also attracts an B, then the bar AB should be a magnetic material now because if it acts, uh, attracts both sides, then that bar AB should be a magnetic material. This is an, ex uh, an experiment to determine if a magnet material is a magnet or a non-magnet, a magnetic or a non-magnetic material. You know this experiment, right? So here, if you can attract the two ends, then this material must be a magnetic material. 38, the core of transformers are usually laminated in order to minimize heat losses due to eddy currents, eddy currents. That's to minimize eddy currents, heat losses due to eddy currents. 39, the tracks produced by alpha particles in a cloud chamber are, normally you know that alpha particles are heavy, so their tracks are thick. And because of that, their weight, they cannot travel for, they cannot travel very fast. Their tracks are also short. And because of that, their weight, hmm? because of that, their weight, they travel straight. It's difficult to deflect them because of the weight. So in this case, um, Long and thin, these two are disqualified over long. When you see long, long disqualifies everything. Mm? Straight, short, and thin is the only correct alternative that we have here. Uh, and thick, rather, I'm sorry. So we have D here as the key. Okay. Which symbols represent an alpha particle? Normally, an alpha particle is a helium nuclei, mm? helium atom that has lost two electrons, right? And helium has um, atomic mass unit of four and two protons, as you can see. So He2 plus. Hmm? So this first one. Question 41. Alpha, beta, and gamma radiations emitted from a source are deflected by magnetic field pointing out the pitch. Out the pitch. The correct diagram for the outcome is. So normally, the first we look at for gamma particles, they are not deflected, right? So gamma should be a straight line, look at it. So outside, as you can see, gamma should go straight. So either A or B is correct. Alpha and beta never go straight. So C and Z are already wrong. Now the next we look at the deflections. Which one is more deflected, alpha or beta? Beta is highly deflected. So in this case, B is wrong because alpha cannot be deflected like this. So our key here should be A. Alpha is slightly defected, beta is highly defected. So you have A as the key. Guys, don't forget to subscribe because without subscribing, you cannot watch paper two. Please subscribe and share this video. Also leave your comments below so that we know any other paper that you have issues on so that we can also prepare that paper and present it to you. The earlier, the better, okay? Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with friends because subscription is free and we are helping you so that you can equally get to other students and help them, especially now that things are difficult for students. When trivalent atoms are added to a semiconductor, its conductivity increases. This process is called doping. Whenever you add trivalent atoms to a semiconductor, you do what you are calling doping. Hmm? 
and this doping is to increase conductivity of the semiconductors. Um, 43. So from question 43 to 15, we have a um, different section. So for, for, for these eight questions, they are grouped as can see. So figure nine is part of a setup used to study the behavior of waves in air. If you look at this experiment, that is the bell jar experiment, right? Yes, can I recall that is the bell jar experiment. And we are going to use the experiment to answer questions 43 to 46. So according to 43, the NX of the tube from the jar is connected to, so this NX, this is X, X is connected to, this one is connected to the vacuum pump that's already known now. So the vacuum pump, so you connect it to the vacuum pump. Question 44. Now the substance applied at Y helps to, normally this, at this point Y here, we usually put them a, a grease or some sort of material that is some sort of sticky to prevent air from escaping. So the material applied at this point here is to reduce the passage of air at the base. Yes, because you need to have a vacuum inside as you continue to suck out air. So the material here is to prevent the uh, escape of air or the entry of air, whatever. So D, uh, question 45, still the experiment. When the instrument connected at point X is operating, when the instrument connected at point X, that's a vacuum pump, right? What happens? So as you continue to suck out air from this uh, bell jar, what happens? We continue to, the bell will continue to ring. It does not stop the ringing. You see, it continues to ring. But what happens is that you, the intensity of the, of the loudness of the ringing is dying down. Until at one point, you no longer hear the sound. So the only thing that happens here is that the loudness of the sound gradually decreases. The vibration does not slow down. It has nothing to do with the vibration, nothing. What happens is the loudness. So the loudness continues to decrease as air is being continuously removed. Until at one point, you no longer hear the sound, though you see the bell ringing. And this happens because there is no material medium for the sound to travel. So the experiments used to show that sound needs a material medium for its propagation or for its travel. Hmm? 46. This experiment shows that, as I've just explained, that sound can travel in air, but not in vacuum. Sound needs a material medium for its propagation, okay? So this is where this uh, question 43 to 46 end. The next set of questions, 47 to 50 concerns the, this diagram. And if you look at this, you see that this is an electromagnet, right? Yes. So figure 10 shows an electromagnet designed to pick up some metallic objects and released elsewhere. A suitable material for the core of X is, we have already discussed this two times, it's soft iron, as you already know. 48. When the switch is closed, the poles at the ends, P and Q, are respectively. Now, look at this diagram very well. If you look at this end, you start this is where current enters. So, current is flowing in this direction, like this. And where current enters into this magnet is the south pole. You can see these longer ends indicate positive here now. So, current flows in this direction, like this, like this. So, this is the south pole. And normally, they always put a switch in the direction where current flows. They don't put a switch down here normally. They put it up here. The current can flow. So this is the south pole and this is the north pole. So P and Q are respectively S and S and careful with this. You can equally use this rule to find out um, the pole, right? Where the current enters is the south pole. So this is the south pole here. And that is how it flows. Okay, 49, one material that cannot be picked up by electromagnets can be made of. Now we know that gold and silver are metals, but they're not, they are, they are not magnetic materials. So an electromagnetic, uh, an electromagnet cannot pick up silver, it cannot pick up gold. There are metals, but they are not magnetic. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and you can only watch paper through if you subscribe. Equally, if you have comments that we know which particular paper and which year you have issues with, so that we can prepare the lessons. Every Monday, we have uploads on YouTube for this uh, for physics. You can share this with your friends and discuss. And leave your questions there so that we can get to you in time. Question 50, which of the following modifications will cause the electromagnet to pick up heavier objects? 
Normally, there are three modifications that can be made to pick up heavier objects. We can wrap the coil around with a piece of iron. For example, nail, nail this iron that's already here. So normally, we do not need iron again because this one is already there. And then we can add more turns in the coil. We can make the coil to have more turns and we can increase the current flowing in the coil. So here we can increase the length of the coil or the number of turns of the coil, right? Yep. Increasing the number of cells and battery. You can increase the number of cells and battery and it makes the voltage constant. If the voltage is constant, uh, the current might not change. So this one does not really hold, does not really tie. Or changing the DC source to AC. That's madness now. Current has to flow in one direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much and watch paper 2A immediately. You can also watch chemistry, mathematics, economics, and so on. But if you are not subscribed, the other videos will not open. It is free to subscribe. You don't pay for anything. Thank you so much and stay tuned. Welcome. We wish you the best of your GCE as you prepare to write. But note, you have to prepare smartly and not hardly. Don't spend the whole night reading without answering questions. What you need are question answering skills. And efforts you have put in will actually bring success. Thank you so much and stay tuned. God bless you as you study. Bye-bye.